Hello there, and welcome to this week's concept map presentation on the approach to a patient with lower limb swelling. My name is Liam Highland, and I'm the lead F2 rep for NUH. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like you to just bear in mind that these uh, that this series of presentations uh, will not cover the pathology uh, and management of each condition, but rather the identification of it. So um, lower limb swelling occurs as a result of edema, which is formerly known as dropsy. Uh, and as such, it has a, a wide variety of causes. And knowing the list of possible differential diagnoses is the first important step in clinical management. You can develop differential diagnosis according to the surgical filter uh, or according to pathophysiology or anatomy or uh, different systems. So lower limb swelling might be unilateral or bilateral. So we're going to start first of all with unilateral leg swelling. So when we think about the anatomy, um, we could um, say that lower limb swelling could be due to cellulitis from an infection through a break in the skin, but it could also be due to a ruptured Baker's cyst. Uh, and this can happen if it appears with a sudden onset, especially when walking up steps with an arthritic knee. Uh, compartment syndrome as well is another very important diagnosis, particularly for those patients in hospital, and is most often due to injury, and it presents with the five P's, which are worth remembering. Uh, pain, paralysis, paresthesia, pallor, and poikilothermia. However, in addition to those causes, it's also very much worth thinking about venous insufficiency, especially for those patients who are in hospital. Um, in this case, it could be due to unilateral varicose veins, a thrombophlebitis, uh, or venous insufficiency, of which itself that can occur through obstruction by a tumour. Uh, if no uh, identifiable cause is obvious in an elderly patient, then it's always worth examining their abdomen and also considering performing a digital rectal examination. And marked swelling of recent and sudden onset is likely to be significant. And as such, we should always remember to uh, rule out a DVT. Uh, and it's important to be able to distinguish a DVT, uh, chronic venous insufficiency from an old DVT, which is known as post-thrombotic syndrome. So after considering the causes of leg edema by the venous system, now let's think about the lymphatic system. So we have to think about causes of primary lymphedema, uh, such as Milroy's disease. Uh, and this is, it, this is a disease that begins in infancy uh, and causes lymph nodes to form abnormally. Another such uh, primary uh, lymphedema disease is MEGS, uh, which starts around puberty uh, or develops during pregnancy um, and has a late onset lymphedema, also known as lymph lymphedema tarda. It tends to occur after the age of 35. So any conditional procedure that can damage the lymphatic system, uh, whether that be lymph nodes or lymph vessels, this can cause uh, secondary lymphedema. So this can be things like surgery, radiation therapy for cancer, cancer itself, uh, and infection. And factors that may increase the risk of developing lymphedema are old age, excess weight, and rheumatoid or psoriatic arthritis. All of these potential causes can actually guide you uh, to what specific questions you're going to ask the patient and what signs you should look for. So now let's move on to bilateral leg swelling. Again, we can um, separate these off into uh, venous causes and lymphatic causes. So um, ankle swelling can be uh, symmetrical, um, but venous insufficiency in particular can tend to affect uh, one side more so than the other. We must always remember uh, that there are several different drugs that can also cause marked ankle swelling, such as NSAIDs and calcium channel antagonists, um, but it could also occur as a result of different causes of hypoalbuminemia, and it's also good to check for proteinuria. When taking the history from the patient, it's always worth remembering to ask for shortness of breath on exertion 
and listening for altered breath sounds, which may indicate uh, heart failure and or corporal manale. And in the elderly, the cause is often multifactorial uh, and immobility itself actually plays a major role. Um, this tends to be less common overall, um, lower limb swelling in younger patients, but if it is present, then it's likely to indicate more serious pathology. So that, that completes this presentation. Uh, I think the main message again to say is that we, you know, we do not recommend you to memorize these concept maps. Instead, we're hoping that uh, you would use these concept maps in order to learn the process of diagnostic reasoning and the ability to critically examine a lot of, a lot of different uh, differentials for a particular presentation. And as such, rank them according to the likelihood of what it could possibly be and to pick up what does not fit the presentation. So using these examples, please do read some symptoms uh, to diagnosis books and have a go at creating your own concept maps for each symptom. Thank you very much for listening.